Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Monica, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, Greg, it's great to be here. How did you get the bug? Um, I got the bug very, very early from my parents. Um, they are the immigrants that came here with you know, very little money, very few contacts, and um, became entrepreneurs out of necessity. And, and watching them, um, I could see nothing better to do with life than to be like them. So I, I very much credit them for my interest in entrepreneurialism. What kind of business did they have, and why did that make such a big impression on you? Well, so my uh, I'll take two steps back from that. My <laughs> sure. father was the captain of a merchant marine ship, and we used to sail around with him when I was little. And literally, it was getting to the point where my brother and I had to go to school, and you couldn't do that on the ship. So um, they ended up coming here from Asia. Asia, and um, the only job my dad could find was paying him half of what he used to make as a ship's captain. And he had the bright idea of um, taking half of his savings and buying up a bunch of Indian handicrafts um, before he moved to the U.S. And uh, with the idea of, hey, I'm going to move there and sell it somehow, question mark. And so um, he came here and, you know, just started going door to door with no plan and no one would buy anything. And so after a while, he ended up taking a job and, you know, just not giving up on this idea to sell his handicrafts. And about a year later, he finally um, opened up his own retail store because he couldn't find other buyers. And within a few months, that store was making so much money that it just started propelling them into this retail business. And, you know, without a plan over the course of, you know, 30 years, it went from one retail store to 16 stores stores, which sold women's apparel, um, to a wholesaling company that sells to Macy's, Saks, Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, to an investment conglomerate that owns several consumer businesses and office complexes, shopping centers, um, housing developments, and it all started with no plan. <laughs> wow. And so as uh, a young person watching all this, was your initial reaction, great, this is finally taking off? Or were you seeing business lessons about what happens when you don't necessarily have a, a firm plan in place and, and what can happen when you do? I would watch them as a child and have no idea like what they were doing and why it was working. And frankly, it was contrary to everything you ever learn in school about starting a business. And um, that was actually the reason why I wrote the book, um, The Entrepreneurial Instinct, um, because uh, looking at them, you know, nothing ever made sense. And I wanted to be just like them. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. But I thought, hey, you know what? I'm growing up in America. I'm a good student. I'm going to have so many more opportunities, so I'm going to one-up them. And I focused on getting my straight A's, going to the best business school, School possible, focused on entrepreneurship at Wharton, counseled businesses even when I was an undergrad, worked on business plans um, in my spare time when I was working in venture capital, and all the while, I couldn't do what they could do with no experience at all, and it was very frustrating, and I think it's a frustration that a lot of really smart people experience. Um, I think there's a statistic out there that says one out of every two adults has um, aspired to own their own business at some point in their adult life yet half of 1% of Americans actually start businesses. And so I was falling into that camp, completely trained to do this, but unable to take the risk. And that's what made me start really exploring why is it that some people who have no experience or training can be successful entrepreneurs. And so what is that instinct that clearly your parents had that, that you struggle with despite all the formal training, but eventually you figured out? So it's, it's really interesting. Um, in, in the research, I started off by just talking to entrepreneurs that take action and skip the planning. That was sort of the litmus of where I started. And after several dozen conversations, I started seeing patterns between these people in the way that they describe themselves, like the, the adjectives they use to describe themselves as good problem solvers and optimistic and how they would talk about taking risks. And out of sheer coincidence, I, would, I was connected to these guys who um, study neurofinance and um, basically neuroscience and behavioral psychology as it, as it deals with financial risk-taking. And um, they basically made me aware of some research that I had never, ever seen before about um, scientists at Cambridge that study risk-taking with entrepreneurs. And it turns out that your ability to be the next Steve Jobs has more to do with your ability to take risks than your IQ, school pedigree, or years of experience. 
And um, the scientists that study risk-taking have pinpointed that ability to two key qualities, um, impulsivity and adaptability. So it's the ability to make quick decisions and then the ability to roll with the punches and make the best of whatever comes your way. And, and it's those qualities that can trump, you know, um, the glossiest business plan you've ever seen or a Harvard Business School degree when it comes to entrepreneurship. A couple of quick follow-ups here. We're talking with Monica Mehta. She is an investor, author, a managing principal at the New York-based investment firm Seventh Capital. Her new book is The Entrepreneurial Instinct. Instinct is right in the title. So is, are those traits that can be learned or acquired, or is that something you either have or you don't? Well, some people are born winning the genetic lottery. So to your point, that impulsivity and adaptability is really linked to your physiology, like who you are. Um, the scientists that study risk-taking risk have found that impulsivity is actually closely associated with your brain and your brain chemistry. It's the, the release of a chemical called dopamine in a part of your brain that motivates you. Some people are just born with a hunger for this chemical, and they subconsciously take um, actions in their life um, and seek out activities that call, cause the release of this chemical. And to the outward world, they just look like people who can't sit still or have attention deficit disorder. But when it comes to entrepreneurship and business, it's this bias to action. You know, while the thinkers are sitting there putting their plans together, these doers are already three steps down the road, whether they know what they're doing or not. And, um, you know, that can be a bad trait that can get you in a lot of trouble. If you're just impulsive, you can do all sorts of crazy things. But when it's counterbalanced, balanced with adaptability, which is like the ability to make the best of whatever situations come your way, it becomes this winning formula of being able to take risks. And while impulsivity is linked closely to your brain chemistry, adaptability is all about personality. And so while some people are born just with, you know, again, winning that genetic lottery, the rest of us, when you understand what allows some people to be, um, great risk takers can make little changes that can make a meaningful difference in their ability to take risks. You mentioned before, Monica, that uh, those qualities can a lot of times be far more valuable than a well-tuned business plan, but I don't want to leave the impression out there, especially if you didn't mean to, that planning is necessarily a bad thing. It's just that you shouldn't cling entirely to that. Is that your point? Well, I think um, one, of, one of the biggest things that this journey has taught me is that um, Planning is useful when it comes to spending money, but when it comes to starting a business, um, it's it's really more of an evolution um, that is ambiguous. And frankly, for these types of journeys, taking action is more valuable than planning. And that is not a philosophy you can follow without you know following some other little contrarian pieces of advice, including you don't spend a dime. So while these business plans are set up to help you figure out exactly how much money you, you need so you can go out and fundraise, um, a lot of instinct-driven entrepreneurs really, really um, are very frugal and don't spend, you know, not not a penny more than they need to. And, and to follow this business uh, this business style, it's essential that you understand um, how to manage capital and how to be lean and bootstrap. So if you don't feel like you're strong in adaptability and intuition, does that suggest then that you might want to think long and hard about opening your own business? Or is there just a, a different strategy you need to go to get to where you want to be? Well, adaptability is um, a, a pretty key trait for a entrepreneur or small business owner only because um, uncertainty is a day-to-day -day thing. It, it's just uh, that's one thing you can count on when you're an entrepreneur, when you're running a small business. You don't really know what's going to come next. And while you can make the most detailed plans for what you will do, if you're not able to course correct, that can be a bit of a detriment for someone who's choosing entrepreneurship as a lifestyle. Um, so if adaptability is maybe not something that you were born with, I think it's definitely a skill that you should work on if you want to be a successful entrepreneur. And it is something you can develop over time. Uh, real quickly, you mentioned the, the term uncertainty. We hear that so much in economic and political circles right now. Monica, as you gauge the landscape of, of the small business world, uh, what's the level of uncertainty out there? Well, the level of uncertainty is pretty high. If I had an alarm, I'd be, I'd be ringing it. So um, while we're saying that adaptability would be a good trait for entrepreneurs, I think adaptability would be a good trait for most Americans these days. Um, you know, 
even those who um, never had that entrepreneurial bug, you know, if you're looking at, at the next 20 years and looking at your nine to five job, I really hope that you feel that your employer is going to keep you around and that you have the job security or that, you know, you have the ability to find something else. I think, I think for most Americans, that uncertainty is really linked to their job, their home value prices, and, you know, what's happening with our political environment, um, you know, whether we're going to finally see Washington take responsibility and steer the country to a responsible place or if they're going to continue to kick the can, which is something we've seen from both parties for for a while now. And last question, what specifically would give them more certainty? Uh, I think for small business owners, um, if we want to create an environment that's supportive of entrepreneurship, we need to see more access to capital. I think a lot of small business owners still complain that it's very hard to get a loan. And while um, the politicians, you know, very much recognize that, I think they don't understand the nuances of of the policies that they put into place. Um, Aspects of financial regulatory reform that were, were put into play actually make it a lot harder for banks to make loans to small businesses. And I think that's an unintended consequence. So to, to inspire aspiring entrepreneurs and to build that confidence, we need to see access to capital. We need to see an optimistic consumer that feels secure in their prospects for the future, that feels like they have money in the bank, that feels that their house value is stable. Um, so when you have that optimistic consumer and access to capital um, and a little bit more certainty from, from regulators, um, I think you're going to see more entrepreneurship. Well, on September 14th and following, go out and grab a copy of The Entrepreneurial Instinct. The author is Monica Mehta, who's been with us this week. Uh, Monica, thank you very much for your time, and good luck with the book. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.